Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I'm going to review the Wild Badger Power 52cc trimmer and brush cutter. Okay, it says that it has a six year warranty which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll have to read more about that and see what it covers. It has the shoulder harness with it. Most of them have that, but they don't have a deluxe usually. Where is my deluxe harness? Right there. Got a Husqvarna deluxe harness that I prefer to use, but I'll use this one for the review and a bump feed trimmer head and it says it includes a brush cutting blade which most of the brush cutters include okay let's unbox this i couldn't find anywhere on here where it says what the fuel mixture is i'm hoping it's the same as my other trimmers might as well show you those right away I have, oh, what is this? A 129, I believe. And where is my other one? Oh, there it is. A FR, or a 336 FR. This is a more industrial one. And that, I'm not sure what the CC is on that. I'll have to check that out. Well, I'll check out the CC on both of these units and put it on screen for now let's open this one up it's pretty heavy i guess what i'll do is put the specs i'm trying to compare this to the husqvarna models and see how it how it stacks up so, I'll put the specs on all three of these on the screen. All right. What is in the box? A half a handle. guard and the harness. Set these aside. Okay, bottom half of the shaft. That's the other half of the handle. This stuff is just laying, laying loose in the box. Wow. Including a cap screw. Well, not the best packaging in the world. See if we have assembly instructions. I think I can get this together regardless, but we'll see if it has any. Okay. Harness, which I can tell right off the bat is incredibly flimsy. I'm going to guess that you would be hurting for certain after a couple hours of trimming with this harness. I believe I have the stock harness that came with one of the Husqvarna models and I'll show the difference between the two. 
if I can find it. I believe I should be able to find it. There is no manual. Oh, maybe this is it. Yeah. Tiny, tiny manual, but it's a manual. And it says to call or check out their website, their email and phone number. Don't know if we'll even need that. Usually these go together pretty easy. Okay, what to do first? Oh. Got a screw loose here as well. This might be an extra screw, but I don't know. I'll check all these to see if there's any missing. Just says Badger on it. WB52, I believe that's a, yeah, BCI. Move the choke lever over to the start position. All right. Yeah, I don't like that. They got the starting information. Be kind of nice if they had a sticker on it. First impressions, everything seems a little flimsy. Well, quite flimsy. Break out the owner's manual to see if they have a preferred assembly order. It's all very tiny. Okay, assembly. That's just what I was going to do. Okay, it shows you how to mount the rod. Okay, we just got a kind of a cheesy screw clamp here. All right, let's get that on. There it goes. Clicked into place. Tighten this up. Feels pretty sturdy. Assemble the handle to the machine. Alright, this doesn't have any, like, indents or anything like that. It's just a tube. Yeah, everything feels... very thin. Now, which sometimes is not a bad thing, but I don't know. Yeah, just very cheap plastic. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to try using this as the primary trimmer. I've been getting kind of fed up with trimmers in general because they can be so hard to start and keep running. Always having problems with the husk varnas, getting them started and then keeping them running once they're started. I can generally get the majority of my trimming or all of my trimming done and I think these zip ties are for that but I'll wait on that let's see what else we got well we got to get the bump head on
the bump heads actually can make or break a machine. Let me double check. I think this is for the... Take that off. I believe that this is for the grass blade. And it says to put it in here until it pops in. It doesn't feel like it's stopping it, but this is coming off. Okay, I'm trying to get this head on, and it shows. I don't know what the heck this is, number five, and there's no there's no place you can look that up in here. I mean, you'd think it would be right on this page, but I mean, all these other ones have, when they have numbers like that, they have the numbers right in the text. But this just has one, two, and three. Um, one, two, three. So, oh well, what it looks like is these two, the one with the spline in it first, and then this one as a spacer, and then the bump head. See the uh, maybe that goes the other way around. Directions are not good. Okay, so if we put this this way, all right. Then we can get in that hole. And like all other trimmers, it has left hand thread. So you got to keep that in mind too. Jeez, I hope I didn't break it. It seems to be like locked tight once you tighten it up and it should spin. Shaft is spinning. That is spinning. locking up again. I wonder if this five is the nut. But why the heck would the nut go on first? I don't know. What If you tighten this up, if you screw on the bump head, it like locks up. And they're showing three things going on there. These two are obvious. 
This one is going on like that. And then this one looks like it's going this way. Yeah, and that's, that's the way it wants to go. But there's something else, and this is the only other thing that's there. But if you put this on, yeah, that's not going to work. You got no access to the spline. I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Uh, I, uh, I really don't want to call these people. Hmm. So far, no good. Okay, show you what's going on here. This has the spline and it's turning, but if you put it on this way, you can't get at the hole. And I guess the hole, I don't know where that hole. You know, it's like the hole really doesn't do anything. Yeah, all it's doing. Where's the... Try it this way. Because you should be able to just put the bump head on. Oh yeah, you gotta stop the shaft from spinning. And our hole's way down there. Yeah, on most of them, the hole is straight down. Yeah, there's no way to get anything in there. Unless you spin this around, then you can get something in there, but it doesn't go to anywhere. Why is that hole even there? Except, you know, to just hold it tight. Now everything is spinning and it should spin with this on as well. Tidy lefty. Yeah, it just feels like it's locked. and that it's not going to spin. I don't see why that should be. Am I, I'm tightening it. And it just keeps on tightening. And then spinning it the other way, it just comes right off. I'm just going to put this on. We'll fill it with gas, start it up, see if it spins. I don't have all day to mess with this. If we can't get it trimming, I'll have to use one of my Husqvarna trimmers. Okay. I guess that uh, socket head cap screw that was floating around in the box is a spare. But I haven't 
gone over the other end all the way yet looking for a missing screw so we'll find that out a little bit I'll check that out later I'll just see if we can get this thing started well, it says it passed it has is this the it has a little sign here that says to push the button or push the bulb. Oh, there's the bulb. It's up underneath here. Okay. Okay. The gas mixture is 50 to 1. Don't really like 50 to 1. I guess that's supposed to be for air pollution but they use the oil for lubrication this cap sucks real cheesy plastic I hope this thing doesn't leak okay I'll give this 10 pumps I'm just gonna see if this thing starts before I do anything else I still have to attach this Okay, got the carb filled. All right, we'll read their starting instructions. Choke lever to the start position. Ten times with the primer. Did that already. Where's that? That's in kind of an unusual position up under there like that. Pull starter cord three to five times until ignition is heard. Move the choke lever to the run position, which is back down again. Continue pulling the starter cord until the engine runs. All right, so basically it's like any other one. Pull this until it pops. Whoa. Holy cow. What the heck? Doesn't even want to pull. leaking where the hell's that coming from all right this thing is leaking pretty bad yike and <laughs> you can't even get the you can kind of pull it and get one pop but it doesn't pull like a normal starter does wow this thing is terrible okay it's been about two weeks now since i unboxed this assembled it and tried getting it started and it got so late in the day, I had to get the trimming done. So I just started up the 336 FR and got her done. That started on the first pull. I don't know, but I think when you put this head on, the bump head, it does not turn. Once you get it turned as tight as it's gonna go, you can't get it turned any further and if you turn it the opposite way it just unscrews this you can turn it both ways without a problem there is the hole for locking this so you can take the nut off or in this case you put a pin down there and you turn it clockwise and it'll come off i couldn't get that done with this i just i don't like this thing and I don't know, 
about the company itself. Apparently they sell this at Lowe's and Home Depot, but I don't know. They must get a lot of warranty calls on this. As far as the fit and finish goes, this has sharp edges. I mean, it's poorly made. This is nice and comfortable. And you can feel the cheapness in this, so I don't know. I got this thing from the company. They wanted me to compare it to the Husqvarna. I told them which ones I have. I have the 336 FR and the 129R. 129R. This is like the lowest level of handlebar trimmer that they have. I like the handlebar trimmers because I find them a lot easier to operate. I tried using this with a saw blade and it doesn't have quite enough power for a saw blade, but this is more than enough for any trimming that you got to do. This on the other hand is a forestry trimmer and can handle any blade that you put on it. This costs four times what this does. This apparent well, they say it has a 52 cc motor in it, and I believe this is a 36 cc motor, something like that. It's a good deal smaller than this, allegedly. I have no idea if this is up to spec or not. Oh, there's another thing. Got the exhaust just coming out right here, and it has like a little piece of screen pushed in there. You can see that as a spark arrester. And these, well, you're not gonna be able to see it through the fins. These have a built in spark arrester, a full spark arrester. And this even says, I don't know if it says it on it or not, but it says somewhere probably in the instructions that these are not to be used in the forest well if it's a brush cutter where else are you going to use it i mean you don't really use a brush cutter in your yard so i don't know the differences in the materials are really pronounced this is really thin cheap plastic and this is a nice hard plastic on both sides. Well, this is really tough plastic. You can really feel the difference in the quality. And like this came broken. And this has a really nice cap on a rubber cap. I'm not going to take that off right now. I wish I would have been able to try this out and see how it worked. But... The way it is, it didn't start and it just seems really cheaply made. So personally, I wouldn't buy one of these. These are more expensive, the Husqvarna models. Like I said, this one is four times the price of this one. And that one is twice the price of this. But these work and I know they're gonna last a long time. My first Husqvarna trimmer, which was, I guess, a little bit bigger than this, it was the 223 FR or R, whatever it was. That one lasted about eight years. Then I got this one, and I got that one from my neighbor. And this one, I believe, is probably eight, maybe nine years old, something like that. I might be wrong and you might have good luck with it, but as far as I'm concerned, I would not buy one of these. My next purchase, as far as trimmers go, is gonna be a battery operated model. Probably a DeWalt because I have the batteries or possibly a Steel or a Husqvarna if I can find a battery adapter that'll work. But as far as this brand goes, I just don't know. If they have an electric one, I'd be willing to try it, but like I said, the quality is just kind of lacking on this. So I guess that's your comparison right there. The Badger did not work at all, and it's flimsily made. It has a little break on it, and you cannot use it in the forest. So personally, I would not get one of these. If you need something for heavy duty trimming in the forest, 
than get a forestry trimmer like this. If you need something for around the house, even if it's a big place like we have here, I think I would go with a DeWalt or another electric model just because they're always going to start for you and be a lot more reliable than a gas powered one like this. So I got to go get trimming and I'm going to use this 336 FR. Can't use this because it won't start. So if you want to see any further reviews, hopefully they have a better outcome than this. Make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.